When it comes to big time liars, who do you think of first? Hey Breakfast Club, we are beginning a series on truth this week and today we are going to talk about the king daddy of all liars himself, Satan. That's right. Now, not everyone today believes that there is a personal evil out there called Satan or the accuser, but the Bible speaks of him numerous times. In fact, he comes on the scene in the first few chapters of the opening book, Genesis. God had already made the sun, moon, stars, animals, humans. All was going well until the person Jesus called the father of lies, or Papa Liar, as I like to call him, shows up. Now, God had already told Adam not to eat from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Satan is pictured as a serpent in the story. We read, one day he asked the woman, did God really say you must not eat from the fruit from any of the trees in the garden? Now, God said no such thing, and Satan knew that, and Eve knew that. There is a sneaky lie underneath the question, and that lie is, God is holding out on you. He doesn't want the best for you. He's being restrictive, repressive, controlling. But back to the story. Of course, Eve said, we may eat fruit from the trees in the garden. It's only the fruit from the tree in the middle of the garden that we are not allowed to eat. God said, you must not eat it or even touch it. If you do, you will die. Now, God said no such thing. So Satan has already gotten Eve to move from not eating from the tree to not touching it at all. More restrictive. You won't die, the serpent replied to the woman. God knows that your eyes will be opened as soon as you eat it, and you will be like God, knowing both good and evil. God is controlling. God is pushing you down. He doesn't want the best for you. He wants to take away your joy and stuff your potential. Does this all sound familiar? All of us have heard these lies, considered these lies, and even believed these lies. All of us. However, the fact remains that Satan can't make us do anything. He only has the power to do what God allows, but he lies constantly. Followers of Jesus are susceptible to his other lies as well. You're hopeless. God can never forgive you for what you did. You're probably the worst person around. You are too far gone. You will never be rid of this addiction. You can't change. You'll only be happy if you ignore God on this. On and on it goes. You and I, if you are a follower of Jesus, are in a battle for the truth, and we know it. If you are not a follower of Jesus, and I'm glad you're here, you are in a battle for truth, and you might think you actually haven't won. I am guessing Eve never felt different immediately after she ate from that tree. Everything probably seemed initially the same. Trees? Yep. Sun? Yep. All looks the same. Many people think that disobeying God has zero consequences, but get beyond the immediate and the long-term effects are disastrous, as Eve quickly found out. The truth is, God does want the best for you, and his word is his message to you in how to get the best life, running counter to Papa Liar. Breakfast Club, be aware of the lies that are playing in your head that are not biblical. They may be coming from a very dark source. Let's pray. Our Father, thank you that you have given us the truth in your word. Thank you that you do want the best for us, that your grace is enough, and that you never give up on us. Thank you for loving us so completely. Help us to recognize Satan's lies. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. Amen. Okay, we're moving on into Thursday tomorrow, everyone. And tomorrow, we're going to look at people who are paid to lie to you. Paid to lie to you. I can't wait to dig into that one. I'll see you tomorrow, everyone. Take care.